John chapter 6 verse 16 John chapter 6 and in verse 16 and when the evening was come now was come is come his disciples went down onto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum and it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them and the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew so when they had rowed about five or and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the sheep, and they were afraid. But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Somebody say immediately. Immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. I'm speaking on supernatural speed part two. And this is dash, the presence of God. Supernatural speed part two. And the study is anchored on the presence of God. We are going to do a short recap. Yesterday, we saw the various definitions of supernatural speed. When we asked, what is supernatural speed? We said, supernatural speed or acceleration is speed. Or acceleration that happens at the frequency of heaven. Speed or acceleration that happens at the frequency of heaven. Secondly, we said... Supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration happening at the pace of God. It's happening at the pace of God. Supernatural speed or acceleration that is happening at the pace of God. Thirdly, we said that supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration that is extraordinary or suprahuman. It is extraordinary. It is suprahuman. And then fourthly, we said that supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration that cannot be accounted for by human effort, resources, or wisdom. The effort of man, the resources of, ma of man, and the wisdom of man couldn't have accounted for the kind of speed that person is seeing. And then number five, we said, Supernatural speed or acceleration is speed or acceleration that happens by a supernatural amplification of action. A supernatural amplification of action. That is somebody takes one step and he sees the results of a thousand steps. He puts forth an action and sees the result of multiplied action. That is supernatural speed. And then we went further to look at the profitability of supernatural speed, the necessity. Why do we need supernatural speed? Why is it profitable first for the escape of stagnation and frustration? In order for your life not to be tied down in stagnation or frustration, you need speed. Number two, we said it is for the recovery of wasted years. The recovery of lost years. If the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, the palmer worm had eaten in your life must be recovered, then there must be supernatural speed. Number three, we said, for the escape of enemy orchestration, whatever is following you from your history, whatever is pursuing after you, you can outrun it. If you have enough speed, you can outrun it. Whatever is pursuing you cannot catch you if you have enough speed. And then we we said for the generation of impact impact is made with speed impact is made with speed we talked about yesterday where you, 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 you are carrying a high velocity um, um, water in a hose versus the one that is low velocity the impact on the ground the generation of impact and finally number five is the fulfillment of destiny on schedule so that you can fulfill life assignment within your lifetime so that you don't have more assignment at the end of your life Fulfill life assignment during your lifetime, in your life schedule. And we saw all of that yesterday. From tonight all the way till the end of the conference, we shall be looking 
out the various secrets of supernatural speed the various secrets or keys of supernatural speed and tonight the first we are looking at is the presence of God actually I'm contemplating whether we are not going to involve morning sessions because the syllabus for this program is so big that I'm not sure we'll be able to finish it just in the evening sessions but let's see how fast we go we have the, the first is the presence of God we have three scriptures or four as reference for this. Number one was where we read in John chapter 6, verse 16 to verse 21. Where the disciples of Jesus were in a boat and they were struggling with the sea. And struggling with, with the storm that was upon the sea. And the sea arose, Bible said, by reason of a great wind that blew. And they saw Jesus, they had labored, but there was no motion. There was activity without motion. They were, they were, they were active, but there was no movement. Activity without movement. But Jesus said, I am the one. And he stepped into their boat. They received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at land. What was that? Supernatural speed that happened. Because the presence of the master stepped into their midst. It was Jesus arrived in the ship and made the great difference. Arrived in the ship. Now, point number one is Jesus in the ship of the disciples. Jesus in the ship of the disciples. And that was John chapter 6 verse 16 to 21. What happened when Jesus appeared in their ship three things happened number one they overcame the storm number two they achieved supernatural speed and number three they arrived at their destination they overcame the storm they achieved supernatural speed and they arrived at their destination just by the master stepping into the ship jesus stepped into the ship the presence of the master in the ship changed everything. I believe there is somebody who is watching right now, whose life is about to change because the master is about to step into your ship. If you are that one, you will shout the loudest, amen. The master stepped into the ship and they overcame the storm. They achieved supernatural speed and they arrived at their destination on schedule. That was the first. Number two was the second example of supernatural speed by the presence of God in scripture was the, the life of Elijah. The life, the life, the life and activity activities of Elijah. You look at that in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. Elijah was the man who said, before God whom I stand. So he defined his position. He defined his address. Before God whom I stand. Before God whom I stand. If you are looking for me, locate me in the presence of God. That was Elijah. It was not before God whom I visited. It was not before God whom I'm trying to hang around. It's before God whom I stand. It is present continuous tense. I stood there. I am standing there. I will stand there before God whom I stand. The presence of God is my abode. It's my, it's my location. And what was the outcome of remaining in God's presence? Anytime and anywhere he was meant to go, the Spirit of the Lord carried him. The Spirit of the Lord carried him. First Kings chapter 18 verse 11 to 12. We read that yesterday. When Obadiah was saying, And now thou sayest, Go. Tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee, whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I and thy servant fear the Lord from my youth. The Spirit of the Lord can carry you anywhere, anytime. Why? Before God whom I stand. The presence of God is a vehicle, is a transportation medium for those who are connected to that presence. It's a transportation channel. It's a transportation avenue. A spiritual transportation channel. A spiritual transportation medium. For those who are connected to God, you can overcome great distances in your life's journey by hanging around God. 
Hear that again. You can overcome great distances by hanging around the presence of God. You can cover vast grounds. You cover vast grounds in a short time by hanging around the presence of God. You cover vast grounds in a short time. You overcome great distances in the physical, in your career, in your destiny, in ministry. You can do that by hanging around the presence of God. That was how the presence of God transported and gave Elijah supernatural speed. Third example was the life and ministry of Philip. The life, we, we read all of this yesterday, but we are applying them now to how the presence of God does that. And Acts chapter 8 and in verse 39 to verse 40, we saw the life of Philip. The Bible said, and when they were come out of the water, that was Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. The spirit of the Lord caught him. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. He was found. He disappeared from one place. Reappeared in another place. Without following a regular transportation. Hear me brothers and sisters. The presence of God can cause you to suspend protocols. Can cause the protocol of... Can cause the mystery of supernatural protocol suspension in your journey of life. That is what should have taken you years to reach. You can reach it in a short time by the presence of God and by the spirit of God. Is God speaking to somebody here? I am speaking to somebody who is coming out of the lockdown and wondering how is my life going to be? Where am I going to start from? How am I going to going to recover all the losses I have experienced in this lockdown season? I am anointed to announce there is a recovery that is coming your way. A recovery is coming upon your ministry. It's coming upon your marriage. It's coming upon your family. It's coming upon your destiny. It's coming upon everything in your hands. You believe that shall the Lord is. Amen. The spirit of God can give you the mystery of supernatural protocol suspension in order for you to step into where you are going. And the devil is about to be taken by surprise. And the forces of hell, they are about to be taken by surprise. All those who think you are finished, all those who think everything is finished, they are going to be shocked because the spirit of God is going to assist you cover vast grounds in a short time, overcome great distances in a very short time. Shout the Lord and say amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Master Koba Radagaya. That is... How the presence of the Lord occasions supernatural speed. No wonder Moses cried in Exodus chapter 33 and in verse 15. He said, if your presence does not go with me, don't carry us from here. The presence of God is so vital. The presence of God is so critical to life's journey. It's so vital to the journey of destiny. Is so vital to progress on earth that Moses was not willing to take a step. He was not willing to make a move until the presence of God was with him. He was not willing to make a move. If your presence go not with us, don't take us from here. What is the use moving from here if your presence is not with us? Let us examine quickly the consequences of the absence of God's, of, of God's presence. I'll say it like this. The consequences of journeying without the presence of God. The consequences of journeying without the presence of God in the life of a person. What are the consequences of going into life's journey? Going into ministry's journey? Going into marital journey? Going into business journey? Going into career journeys without the presence of God? I'll give you five of them very quickly. Number one, consequences on conquerable storms. Whenever a person journeys with and God is absent, this person will encounter storms that are not conquerable outside the presence of God. 
You saw the journey of the of, of, of the journey of, 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 of the disciples where we read in our text in John chapter 6 and in verse 16, all the way to verse 21, and, and they were they were they were trying to move without Jesus. This was not the first time they were encountering a storm on the sea, but this was the first time they were encountering a storm in the absence of the master. <laughs> <laughs> all the time they encountered the storm the master was there rises up uh, at their instance or whatever and say peace be still but in this case the master was absent and they had to battle the storm they had to struggle with the storm they had to fight with the storm until the master arrived beloved in case you say that was a solitary case I, I, I show you the example of Jonah Jonah also had the same experience. In the book of Jonah chapter 1 and in verse 1 to verse 4, Jonah chapter 1, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, from where? From the presence of the Lord. He rose up to flee from where? From the presence of the Lord. He rose up to flee from where? From the presence of the Lord. And went down to Joppa. And he found the sheep going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. We have talked about that before. That when you go where God does not send you, you pay for it. And when you go outside the presence of God, you pay for it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And he went down into it. To go with them unto Tashis again from the presence of the Lord. Twice in the same verse. He was leaving the presence of the Lord and leaving the presence of the Lord. Then the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship ay, 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 was likened to be broken. Beloved brothers and sisters, the worst you can do to yourself is to journey without his presence. Is to make moves without his presence. Is to travel without his presence. I don't know who God sent me to hear tonight. But please, I beg you. Don't step into that career journey without the presence of God. Don't take yourself to any country of the world without the presence of God. Don't step into a marital relationship without the presence of God. Don't step into a business venture without the presence of God. And there is something we call spot diagnosis in medicine. Where you, you, you are asked to look at the patient. Don't ask him or her any question. Just look at the patient. And tell us what is wrong with him. <laughs> that is, you, you looked at the eyes and you looked at the hair. And you looked at everything and head to toe. And say, it looks like this child is suffering from protein allergy malnutrition. Oh, I can see this man, he has a chronic Liver disease. I can see, just see the yellowness of the eye. I see the bloated tummy. I see the clubbing of the fingers. He has, and so on. There's spot diagnosis. The stigmata of chronic liver disease, yeah. And, and, you, and you have all that. You know, uh, so there is spot diagnosis. And I, I'm, I'm about to tell you something. In case you are confronted with unconquerable, continuous storms, spot diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to ask anybody any question. Is it from one storm to another, another storm to another, another, another storm? I mean, I mean, I mean, you traveled out of the country and then today the police arrested you. Tomorrow somebody took you to the prison, another tomorrow, something, something, and just from one to another, to another, to another, to another. It is possible you journeyed without God. Journeyed without God. Journey without God. Ask yourself the question. If the storm is getting too much, Lord, the question to ask is, Lord, are you here? Have I moved without you? Have I moved ahead of you? Are you here? Are you in this thing? Are you in this ministry? Are you in this ministry? Are you in this marriage? Did you send me? That is... Unconquerable storms, consequences of journeying without the presence of God. Number two, impedance. What is called impedance in physics, in uh, impedance or resistance to speed and progress. 
There is resistance to speed and progress. When we journey without God, when we take steps and make moves without God, that was what we saw in John chapter 6 and in verse 16 to 21. That was what we saw. That was what we saw with the life of Noah, Jonah as well. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 all the way to verse 4, there is impedance, there is resistance to speed or progress in life. You feel like something is holding you back. You feel like you are struggling, but you are on the same spot. You are making every effort you can make, but your life is still on the same spot. Something seems to be hindering you. The question is, is God on the journey? Is God in the, in the relationship? Is God in the business? Is God in the venture? Consequence number two. Number three is danger to life and existence. Danger to life and existence. When the storm came, the storm came to, to, to scatter that ship now, and, 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 and the same and the same scripture is applicable for all points I'm making. The, 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 the storm came to literally scatter the ship. In the case of Jonah, the Bible said the storm was scattering, trying to pieces the ship. It was so terrible that they had to carry Jonah and throw him inside the water for there to be calm. And if it was not that God had an interest in him and gave him a second chance, he would have been gone forever. He was swallowed by a whale, a blue whale, a blue whale. Well, maybe a, a blue whale, a, a shark. Now, those are the kind of things that can swallow a person. A, a shark will eat him up. The blue whale, the blue whale has a tail that is the size of a small, a small aircraft. He has a heart that is the size of a car. He has blood vessels that are big enough for a man to swim inside. I'm sure that was what swallowed Jonah and swallowed Jonah and God gave him indigestion. <laughs> you do understand what I'm saying? Life in danger. If you, if you look at Jonah chapter 2 and read from verse 1 to the verse 10, you will see what Jonah suffered. What house are people say he, he, he ate quakwa? He, he, he chewed quakwa. He said, then Jonah cried, said, I cried by reason of my affliction. Verse 2, my affliction unto the Lord. He had me out of the belly of hell. That's I passed through hell. And he heard my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas. The floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about. Even to the soul. The depth enclosed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou hast brought up my life from corruption. That is, I passed through, what they say, I passed through hell. I passed through hell. Do you want to pass through hell? I don't think so. If you want, then Go into the business without God. Take your journey and travel anywhere you want in the world without God. Find yourself a man or a woman without God. And just do what you want. That is what is called passing through hell. Danger to life and existence is the consequence number four of journeying in the absence of God. Number five is massive monumental losses. Losses are inevitable. They are inevitable. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 5 in the, in the, in the text where they were, we, we read, they began to throw out of the ship the cargo to lighten the ship because of the trouble they were in. They were throwing cargoes out and throwing everything out. Everything was perishing so they can survive. Massive losses. Losses happen in the absence of God. Gains happen in the presence of God. One thing to check in your life is the presence of God. Whether God is present or absent, one thing to check is, why is there so much of monumental massive losses? I'm not talking of you made a mistake and you had some little issues. No, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about monumental, colossal, massive losses accompanied with hazards and dangers. Accompanied with hazards and dangers. Hazards and dangers. Then you are face to face with a life where God is not found. 
Now, finally, number five. What is the consequence of journeying where God is absent? It is uncertainty of arrival at destination. There is the uncertainty of arrival at destination. If God is not in the boat, in the ship, arrival at destination is not guaranteed. Exodus chapter 33 and in verse 15. Exodus 33 and in verse 15. The Bible said, and he said unto him, if your presence will not go with me, don't carry me from here. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Don't carry us. John 6, 6 verse 21. John 6, 21. As soon as Jesus entered, they were on land. Immediately they, they received him into the ship. Immediately they arrived on land. That couldn't have been guaranteed if he was out. There are many people who live and end their journeys without seeing the best of God for their lives. Why? Because of journeying without God. There are people who started churches that God did not start. There are people who embark on endeavors that God has had no hand in. There are people doing all manner of things that God has, is not involved at all. There are people who would have been complete celebrities in their countries, but they are non-entities in other countries. Pardon the use of that word. It's not derogatory. In their place, they would have been celebrated. In where they are not meant to be, they are abnormally tolerated. Tolerated. That will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is it. Now, going further, there are four dimensions of the presence of God. I'd like you to understand. This may be dimensions you may know partly before now, but I'm sure you don't know the full extent of it. Dimensions of the presence of God. and some, Everybody is in one dimension or the other. Number one is called all-round presence. There is the level one, all-round presence. That is universal presence. That is ubiquitous presence. Generalized presence. The omnipresence of God. This is the level one. This is the level where God is everywhere. God is everywhere. Psalm 139 verse 7 tells us that. Psalm 139 verse 7 tells us that. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Mashobala. If I ascend up into the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, you remember we sang this song, and I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me up. If I say surely, the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be a light about me. Yeah, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike unto thee. Can you see that? You possess my reins in my mother's womb. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Isaiah 66 verse 1. He said, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? That is, I sit in heaven, my leg is on the earth, which means I feel everywhere. Do you understand that? The, 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 the psalmist is saying, God, God feels all the way from heaven to hell. That's what the scripture said. Now, the meaning of that is, even in the beer parlor, there is a presence of God there. That's the universal presence. God being everywhere. Even in the harborless place. From heaven all the way to hell, the psalmist said. That is God is everywhere. Some people, that is the level of presence that they know. That is the level of the sinner's knowledge. And the ordinary person. Everybody, good or bad, is in touch with this, one, this particular presence. 
That's, that is, that is, that is potential presence. Number two is the abiding presence. This is the presence of God that is with this child of God. That is, you are the child of God. You didn't do anything for this particular presence. The fact that you belong to him. He said, lo, I am with you. Always. <laughs> Something is happening. Psalm 23 and in verse 4. He said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. This is the abiding presence. You are with me. Psalm 3, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 3, verse 1 to 3 said, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God's sila. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my heart, you are with me. Matthew 28, verse 19, all the way to verse 20. Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Somebody say amen. All round presence is the general one. Abiding presence is the one that is, he is there. Whether you know or not is another matter, but he is there. In the midst of confrontations and challenges, he is there. Whether you are aware or not is another matter. Now, all right, so that is abiding presence. Number three is active presence. All around presence is God is everywhere in the world. Abiding presence is God is with you. Active presence is God is not just with you. He's not just there. He is doing something. <laughs> because he could be there and, and, he's, and he's, just, he's just present there. He is doing something. Active presence. That was what happened in Exodus chapter 13 verse 21 to 22. The Lord went with the children of Israel and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day by night. The Lord went with them. He went with them. He went with them and was doing something. Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. If you remember when they were worshipping in the temple. The Bible said it came even to pass. As the trumpeters and singers were as one. To make one sound to be heard. In praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals. And instruments of music. And praised the Lord saying. For he is good for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with the cloud. Even the house of the Lord and something began to happen. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Hallelujah. God is all around everywhere. Now God is with you. Now God is not just with you. God is doing something where you are. <laughs> God is doing something where you are. In 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 1 to 3, the ark of the covenant of the Lord was taken to the house of Dagon. The Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early in the, on the morrow, behold, the, that Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. They thought it was a mistake. The ark of the Lord represented the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord was there. And they put devil behind the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord was causing it calamity. It was causing it calamity. <laughs> because light and darkness cannot dwell. Beloved, if you are 
just at the level of, oh, God is everywhere. I'd like you to move to the realm of the abiding presence. If you are at the realm of God, oh, he's with me. I want you to move yet to the realm where he's not just with me. He is doing something. But there is a fourth one, and that is called the accomplishing presence. This is all around means God is everywhere. Abiding means he is with me. Active means he is doing something. Accomplishing is presence on demand. Demanded presence. Target specific presence. The presence that has been given an assignment. That has an assignment to tackle. This is what I mean. You are not just, he is not just present in your life. You are handing over particular tasks to him. You are giving him the driver's seat. At the realm where we talked about the active presence, he's walking by himself. Maybe worship happened and he showed up to do things by himself. Maybe something happened. But in this case, you are handing over the driver's seat of your life. You are giving him full control, the right of way. I don't just want you to be there generally or with me generally or do some general things. I am handing my marital destiny into your hands as you are with me. I am handing my business future into your hands. I am handing my life into your hands. Take over the driver's seat. You know, we read in Exodus chapter 13 that the Lord was with them. In verse 12, 21 to 22, in a pillar of cloud by day. And he was already with them walking generally. But in, in chapter 33, verse 15, Moses was placing a definite demand. God was already there active, but he wanted more. He wanted a greater dimension of accomplishment. I know you are there and I've seen that you have been working, but I want to officially hand over this journey to you. I want to officially hand over this journey of my life, this journey of my destiny. I am sure somebody is understanding that. Already we saw God was already active. He was already leading by day and by night. But Moses was placing a further demand to accomplish specific things. It's like what happened in the wedding in Cana of Galilee. In John chapter 2 and in verse 1. God is present everywhere. But we have a wedding. We want you to be there. We want to hand over this wedding to you. This marriage. We don't want it to happen in your absence. We don't want it to be that God is generally there. We want you to be specifically there to, and to attend to this matter. And as they invited him, and he sat there, something spoiled. And the thing that spoiled, spoiled in his presence. And they didn't need to give him any extra invitation. They already gave him seat at the wedding. He fixed it. Because he had a seat. There may be other weddings where wine finished. He had no object, he had no agenda there. Nobody invited him there. <laughs> there may be other places where there may be situations. He may hear of him, but he won't go. Because God will never assume your needs. He won't. And I'm going to come to that later. Because he said that don't talk anyhow when you pray, because your heavenly father knoweth what you have need of. Before you ask, then why are we praying? If he knows why, what I need before, then why should I ask? So that I can confirm my dependence. So that I can let him know I am not in assumption. It's the same here. If God is everywhere, then why are they inviting him? He cannot, he cannot multiply wine from, he cannot, he, he has to be, he has to be personally invited and involved. Somebody say, Amen. This, beloved, at these levels, this is my counsel. In case you are that kind of person, where oh, God is everywhere, even God is in my heart, even God is, well, if you are that kind of realm, there is a, there is a, there is a level of abiding presence. 
where as a child of God, you know that you can't go through anything on your own. And then there is that active presence. We are times we worship a little and then congregation, things begin to happen scatteredly. Somebody was saying that uh, in this coronavirus situation, um, service starts and power begins to move and um, people fall under the anointing of things happen and those kind of things. Uh, uh, there is social distancing, so how will the people be assisted? They haven't born the corona well. <laughs> Shadow. Shadu Noma. <laughs> and you know that that devil, the major target of that devil is the church. I'm sure you know that. Major, 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 major target. Brought one terrible news that one person was positive somewhere, infected the church and infected the country or something. It may happen and it may not happen. No, I don't know. But whether it happened or it didn't happen, show the target of that devil, devil virus, to cast as passion on the church. But we're leaving that. Let's move on. You have the, 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 the all around presence, the abiding presence, the active presence, and then you just proceed, accomplishing presence. Where God is taking full ownership of your life. He's not just there. He's not just doing some things on his own. But he's in active partnership with your life. What are the secrets of his presence? As we begin to try to round this off. Because of time. What are the secrets of his presence? When I'm talking about his presence. The universal presence. You don't need to do anything about that. The abiding presence, he is with you. Whether you are aware or not, he is there. But if he is to be active and he is to accomplish definite things, there are things to understand. Number one, I want to ask the question like this. Then I will answer it. Who is God comfortable to be around? Around with? Who is the kind of person that God is close to? Who does God want to hang around with? Number one, people who maintain and conscience. Clear, clean life and conscience. Clear, clean. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to 2. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 all the way to verse 2. He said, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. That he ca it cannot save, neither is he heavy that it cannot hear. He said, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. So there is a separation. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5, he said, Who shall ascend into the hill of God? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands to stand with God, pure heart, has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who is he that God is comfortable with? People with, who maintain a clear, clean life and conscience. I didn't say people who are perfect. That's not what I said. I didn't say people who are perfect. I didn't say people who have never offended God before. I said people who have a clean, clear life and conscience. People who cannot, who cannot, who are not comfortable with wrong. They are not comfortable with wrong deed. They cannot maintain a guilty conscience. People who are permanently in the process of making, of, of, of being right with God. Clean. Clear like that. Not people who are backstabbing and, and backbiting and and, and, and all manner of things and behave like they are clear. No. People who are children before God. You know children? I'm sorry. Mommy, sorry. And mommy will say, don't do it again. Yes, mommy. Clear life. And crooked people. Dubious people. Fraudulent, hypocritic people. 
two-sided people never experience the presence of God. Never. I am talking about people with deep consecration. No allowance for baggage, garbage. Who are those people? Number two, people who maintain a consciousness of his presence. That is a consciousness of his presence. This abiding presence we are talking about, lo, I am with you. You are conscious of it. You are conscious of it. James 4, 8 said, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Be conscious that I am with you. Let your mind retain me and, and, you, will, and, you, will, and you will connect me. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, he will keep in perfect peace whose heart is stayed upon him. Be conscious of the fact that he is with you. Can I say something to you? It is possible for God to be with you and he does not profit you. It's very possible. We say that already. Abiding presence. There are many, many Christians who, who have never seen the benefit of that presence in their life. There must be that consciousness of the fact Anything you have is never beneficial for as long as you are ignorant of his availability. Say that again. Whatever you have is never beneficial for as long as you are ignorant of his availability and profitability. What you have that you do not know of is of no use to you. It's of no use to you. You have many features in the iPhone. But for many of us, all you do is the phone and all that, like myself. The, the majority of the, of the benefits inside the dragon dictation and all the things, I don't know of it. I don't know. I'm only using for, for the purpose for which I got it. That's why when they say a new phone has come, it has more functions. I think, what, what is a function? My, phone, my major function is to meet the call, receive call, and so on. And, and for as long as I don't know all those details, as all the things it can do can never profit me. And it's no respecter of persons. You have to know what it does. My people are destroyed not because the devil is too strong, but for lack of knowledge. I am with you, but you are being oppressed by the devil every day because you are not aware. People who maintain a consciousness of his presence. Number three, people who are of a broken and contrite spirit. Broken and contrite spirit. People with proven and deep humility. Proven and deep humility. The deeper your humility, the greater the presence. Psalm 34 verse 18, Psalm 34 and in verse 18, he said, The Lord is near to them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as are of contrite spirit. He's near to people, broken people, humble people. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. For thus saith the Lord, the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also. That is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Humble. humble. Arrogant, proud and ostentatious people. Are only full of themselves. And empty of God. When a man is full of himself. You can be sure. He is completely empty. I'm bankrupt of God. That is number three. Lord, every trace of arrogance or pride that will deprive me of your presence, take it from me. Number four, who are the people that God is comfortable with? Those who understand authentic and heartfelt worship. Authentic and heartfelt worship. Not just people who sing and clap. Deep, authentic worshipers. 
We saw that in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. When they were worshipping in depth and the presence of God fell. In John chapter 4 and in verse 23, he said, the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It was Michael W. Smith that says, when the music fades and all is stripped away. I'll bring you something that is more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you require. That is, be beyond the song is the heart. The contrite nature of the worshiper. The other day I was in my study. And I, and I worshipped myself to pieces. I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and nose charged. And I realized that it's not a matter of what happens only when where there is church. That's you and God. Nobody is looking. Nobody is watching. Your heart is overwhelmed. Trying to remember the song. There are many who can clap, who can dance, who can jump when there is drum. But forget about there's nothing. There is nothing beyond that in their closet. Coming back to the heart of worship is all about you. It's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. 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 Deep worship. You see, the way we feel in church when we, we are in the heat of that worship. Trust God for that kind of thing to happen on your own, in your closet. That unction, that, that heartfelt worship is a secret. God hangs around those who enjoy his worship, who loves his worship. Those who understand, people who understand authentic and heartfelt worship can never can never be stranded when it comes to God's presence. Are you a big man pastor? You don't know what it means to worship. You only come into church when service worship is over. When the small children have finished doing the small children play, then the big man walks in. Is that how you are? You don't understand what worship is at all. And do you know that the temperature of the church rises or falls on the temperature of the pastor? The spiritual climate in that assembly is set by the set man that God has put there. Very, very important. The church cannot outpray the pastor. The church cannot outworship the pastor. Ah. People who understand authentic and heartfelt worship. Number five, who is the kind of person that God wants to be with? It is people People whose hearts beat as one with his, with God's heart. People whose hearts beat as one 
with God's heart. Because two can't walk together except they be agreed. You have a heartbeat that beats in unison with the heart of God. If his heart is beating for souls, your heart is beating for souls. If his heart is beating for the rescue of the perishing, your heart is beating. People whose hearts purpose and pursuit in life are united with the heart, purpose and pursuit of God. People whose hearts, purpose and pursuits in life are united with the heart and the purpose and the pursuit of God. Those kind of people don't lack the presence of God. Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2. The psalmist is talking about the deer pants after the brooks. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2. It says, it says the same thing. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul is longing for you. My flesh is longing for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see thy power, to see thy glory, such as I have seen in the sanctuary. It is not out of order to ask God. Put in my heart your desires. Put in my heart your plans. Deposit in me your passion. Deposit in me, in me your concern. What bothers you? Put it here. And then your heart will beat in unison with God's heart. And then two can walk together because they are agreed. Who are the kind of people that see the presence of God? Number, what is that? Number six, people who are devoted and committed to the lifestyle of prayer. Devoted and committed to the lifestyle of prayer. When you see prayerful people, they are presenceful. They carry a presence that is unmistakable. Elijah was a man of like passions, according to James chapter 5 and in verse 16, 17. He was a man of like passion. Elias was a man of like passion as we are, and he prayed earnestly. It was that Elijah who said, Before God, whom I stand. Before God, whom I stand. Prayerful people are presenceful people. When you look at them, you sense God. When you stare at them, you feel God. In James chapter 4 verse 8, he said, Draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. Come close at the place of prayer, and I will come close to you. Luke chapter 9 verse 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering that is the glory of the Lord appeared while he prayed beloved check up your prayer life every attack on your prayer life is an attack on his presence around your life every attack on your prayer life is an attack on your possibilities with God that is people who are devoted and committed to the lifestyle of prayer. Number seven. There are people who access light and insight. People who continually access light and insight from the word of God. Light and insight. Because the, the, the God of the word is the same as the word of God. The God of the word. Every fresh light injects a higher level dimension of presence. Fresh light. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. As you open the scripture, you trust God for something you have never seen before. As you open the daily devotional, you trust God for something you have never seen before. As you listen to the message on tape, on CD, on DVD, you trust God for fresh gushings of light. And as you receive it, you make your searches to confirm that what you saw or what you heard was real. And as the fresh light comes, fresh presence, you feel the anointing afresh when you get new light a new insight. No wonder the Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 21 the Lord revealed himself to Samuel 
by the word of the Lord. The revelations of God come out of the revelations of the word. God reveals himself as the word is revealed to you. He revealed himself as he reveals himself as the word is revealed to you. That was number seven. Who is the person that God likes to hang around? Number eight. There are people who are willing to go all the way with God. People who are willing to go all the way with God. All the way to Calvary he went for me. He went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary he went for me. He died to set me free. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. Jesus went for me. He went for me. All the way to Calvary, he went for me. He died to set me free. He went all the way for me. I am ready to go all the way for him. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. That was what Abraham did. Abraham was called out from his father's house to his kindred, his country, and he stepped out and went where he didn't know he was going. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 5. Because of time, we will not read it. And as he was able to do that, in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, God could say to him, walk before me, walk before me, walk before me. Since you have made up your mind to go all the way with me. I am talking of those who are ready to sacrifice anything for God. To sacrifice anything to go all the way with God. People who are ready to do whatever God wants them to do. When you are at such a point. No limits. No limits. There are those who are negotiating things with God. Who are wiser than God. Who believe that God wants to inconvenience them. God wants to make them live a frustrated life. So they just do it partially. You can't see God that way. No. People who are willing to go all the way with God. Finally, number nine. People who deliberately involve God in their life's plans and schedules. They deliberately involve God in their life's plans and schedules. Deliberately involve God in their life's plans and schedules. They deliberately involve God in their life's plans and schedules. I'm talking about people who feel absolutely helpless and defeated without God. They, are, they feel defeated and helpless. I can't go on this marriage journey, Lord, if you are not going. I can't go on this business journey, Lord, if you are not going. I am not interested in anything called ministry if you are not there. People who involve God, that is what establishes above all the accomplishing presence that makes God not just to be generally working, but to work in your life. Where he is particularly involved in your schedule. Like Moses. If you are not going on this journey, we are not going. Exodus 33 and in verse 15. We are not going. And in John chapter 2 verse 1. This marriage is not complete if you are not here. This marriage is not complete if you are not here. Father, I cannot go into this job if you are not going. I can't go into this marriage if I am not sure you are not going. I can't go into this and I can't go into that. Beloved brothers and sisters, God likes everybody. He's not partial, but he has intimates. We are all brethren, 
But it's not, it's not, it's, it may not be possible that everybody who is a brother is somebody you can tell your closest secrets to. Except those who have proved themselves trustworthy to you. That's how it is with God. He doesn't hate any of his children. But there are those he, he, he deals more with based on, on their own dealings with him. Because he said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. I may not be able to go through all the points because of our time. I'm very, very sorry because we had a lot of technical hitches in the course of the transmission. The devil knows what you're about to receive. So there was a lot of hitches and that took a lot of time tonight. But tomorrow we shall be on the dot of five and then see how we can round off before time. Who are the people that God is close to? Let me go over it very quickly. Even if I do that, who are the people? People who maintain a clear, clean life and conscience. Two, people who maintain a consciousness of his presence. It's not just they are conscious. People who maintain, who are of a broken and contrite spirit, proven and deep humility. People who understand authentic and heartfelt worship. People whose hearts beat as one with God's heart. People who are devoted and committed to the lifestyle of prayer. People who continually access light and insight from the word of God. People who are willing to go all the way with God. And people who deliberately involve God in their life's plans and schedules. I'd like you to go through all those points when you, when you look into your books and for all our locations where you are worshipping online in the church location, when you go back home tonight, go through the points and ask God, Lord, show me in this place where I need to up my game, where I need to do something beyond the normal things I have done. In order to see you more than I have seen. Show me where I have to up my game. Show it to me Lord. And he will show to you. Finally, how does the presence of God grant supernatural speed? How? Quickly. Number one, the presence of God keeps you moving. It keeps you moving at the pace of God. Or at your God ordained pace. Keeps you moving at the pace of God. Or at your God ordained pace. That is if God is with you. You move at, his, at the pace he had ordained for you. Not what the devil. Not how the devil wants you to move. Or not even how your, your, your own self wants to move. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, he told Abraham, walk before me. I am going to supervise your walk. Walk before me. Just walk before me. I'm going to monitor your walk. I am going to orchestrate your steps. I am going to fuel your motion. Walk before me. And you can't walk before me and walk how you like. I will tell you. I will dictate your steps. When, the, when God is present with you, you walk at, your, at the pace of God or at your God-ordained pace. That was Genesis chapter 5 verse 22 and also verse 24. We saw how Enoch walked with God. Genesis 5 rather. Genesis 5, 22 and then 24. Enoch walked with God. Taking steps with God. And I heard God's servant Bishop Ikedebo said, if you walk with giants, you cannot take dwarf steps. If you walk with the almighty God, you can't take miniature steps. You take massive steps. You make massive moves. Second, the presence of God brings direction, which guarantees acceleration. The presence of God carries direction. He said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Psalm 89 verse 15. The presence of God comes with direction. Things to do, steps to take, moves to make. And that guarantees acceleration. Write the vision, make it plain that he may run. That will read it. I will hear what the Lord will say. 
In Numbers chapter 13, verse 21 to 22, we saw that the presence of God in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. 31. That presence of God cost them. It cost sorry, Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And the peace, God went before them to lead. He went before them to guide. The presence of God shows you the moves to make, the steps to take. Listen, and when you know what to do, you always live where you are, per time. When you know what to do, when you know where to go, you can't be tied to the same spot. That is the benefit number two of the presence of God and how the presence of God guarantees speed. And finally, the presence of God carries the anointing which dismantles yokes, burdens, and limitations. The presence of God carries the anointing and the anointing dismantles yokes, burdens, and limitations. The presence of God carries the anointing which dismantles yokes, burdens, and limitations. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth to the Holy Ghost and with power, for God was with him. God with a man equals the anointing. And Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, in that day the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing. The presence of God dismantles brings the anointing and the anointing breaks your limitations so you can go forward it's a new day for you rise up on your feet